So we're all doctors and we all went to med school and residency and all the pain that goes through with that. So what was the moment when you decided that medicine was your calling and especially when integrative medicine was your calling? Were there moments where you're like, well, this is what I want to do? Or was it sort of a gradual thing that builds you up towards this? I was one of those kids who like wanted to be a doctor since I was like five. I was obsessed with the doctor's office. I would like ask them for gloves and everything that they could give me that was disposable and I would bring it back and use it on my stuffed animal. So that, that, that was like, and then I just carried that on. But integrative medicine, actually my first exposure was um, work that I did in Dominican Republic. So I did global health work and um, we worked with the doctors there and we would do house visits because it was, a you know, in order to get to the clinic that was at the foundation, um, patients had to actually walk through a river and there was no bridge. And so some of those patients couldn't. So we would go do house visits and they were using like presses of garlic and lemon to as antimicrobial agents because these patients couldn't afford antibiotics. And there was only limited as supplies for the patients who were really sick or had really serious wounds. So for very minor wounds, they were doing that. And that was actually this garlic lemon story is, has persisted through my life because my first dog bite when I was, when I was four and I was in Dominican Republic, my grandma's house and that's what they put on my dog bite. So, um, so I was exposed to that and I, you know, I learned a lot about like how we can't just bring, come in from, you know, with global health and come in with this like optimistic view of we're going to give people medicines and they can get this and that. And we had to really sit with the reality of like the limitations of resources and how to use nature and how to use the resources that the people had in the land to be able to benefit them and really save the money and the funding for those who couldn't just deal with, uh, you know, couldn't really use those you know, resources from the land to be able to um, get better. And so a lot of it was also interesting because preventative health was something that was talked about. And it wasn't just like, you know, there was HIV was rampant in that town of Jamasa. And it was not about getting, you know, H you know, um, ARTs to them. It was about educating the young um, about the disease and about prevention that was really making, the mo you know, making the most difference. And so that was like my first, first exposure. But I, you know, I was like, when I came, you know, and then I went to medical school and everything, I very much, that sort of thought just, I got farther and farther away from it as I learned medicine here. And we weren't so much relying on natural resources and the, you know, prevention was a big part of our practice, um, at least when we were taught in medical school and practice in residency. And so later that sort of changed and I can get on into how I got into integrative later, but yeah, that's like when, when I wanted to become a doctor, my first exposure in integrated medicine. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, my story, um, no one in my family are, are doctors. Um, and I was actually going into the environmental field. I figured, you know, I kind of wanted to try to save the world, something like that. And, um, so I was studying that in college and then my father got very sick. And, you know, he went through the usual process of seeing many specialists and wasn't getting better. So he made his way eventually through the grapevine to a group of holistic doctors uh, who were based out of New York City and also out of Woodstock. And I saw him getting better for the first time in my life. So I said, wow, there's really something here. So um, in my summers, I would go work on their clinic in Woodstock. And what was amazing about it, you know, there was a waiting room, but a lot of times the patients wouldn't be in the waiting room. Like, where are the patients? They'd be outside on the farm. And, you know, while you're waiting for your appointment, we would show them around and like kind of teach them about the plants. And we would grow our own medicinal plants and herbs and flowers. So I was like, wow, this is really, there's a different way. There's a different way for medicine to be practiced. So um I started working with them, you know, during my summers and eventually they just put it to me. They said, Zach, you're really good at this. You know, you should go into medicine. And I was like, oh boy, you know, I always just thought it was too much school. For some reason, I just never thought about it. But the more I sat with it, I was like, you know what, actually they're right. You know, I, um, you need to be the change you wish to see in the world. Right. And it starts with helping people one at a time. You know, it wasn't realistic to try to just all of a sudden change the whole planet you know so i so i realized that it made sense on all the levels and really before you can even help one person you have to learn how to help yourself so in a very personal way in a very private way actually i learned about um spe specifically about ayurveda which is ancient indian medicine which is really my passion 
um, but not in an academic way, in a way, you know, I, I would read about it, but really they would teach me the practices and I would do them myself. And over time I said, wow, this is, this is really changing my life around. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but it really changed my entire life. Um, so I went into medical, medical school explicitly with this in, in the back of my head. I said, I really want to do integrative medicine. I really want to do holistic medicine. I thought it was going to be way harder to make it happen. But, you know, by the time I was in medical school, this field has already come such a way that there was already this program, Dr. Preek had already established the center, you know, there was already the Andrew Wall fellowship. So um, I was very lucky that the timing of it, because actually, the structured training was really what took everything to the next level for me. Yeah. Yeah. So my story of how I got into medicine is kind of crazy. So I come from a large family of doctors. My parents are not doctors, but pretty much everyone else is. So it was sort of like, you sure you don't want to go into medicine? And I opposed that idea. I was like, anything but medicine, absolutely anything but medicine. So I went to um, college and I was doing uh, MBA, thinking about doing an MBA in finance. And then third year, junior year of college, um, my cousin from India, um, was like, okay, you want to come for the summer? I said, sure. And then at that time, right before I went, there was a major flood in the area that I grew up in. So, and the flood, flood was so disastrous that hundreds of people died. And then some of my family members were doctors there. They said they were doing a mission. They were just going to go out to these remote villages just to give care, just basic care. And I said, I'll tag along. I'll help any way I can. And some of the things that I saw on that trip was just beyond what a typical like 20 something year old who lives in New York, New Jersey would, would have ever have encountered, right? You walk into these villages, you have to walk through mud and water, no cars are getting there. You see literally dead animals floating by you. The smell I've never, I'll never forget. Uh, and it's like a hundred degrees and like 90% humidity and these people are struggling. So just getting to them to address basic wounds and just give them basic antibiotics, whatever you can, or just help them safely rescue. So at that moment, there's something click. And it was like, I can be the best financier. I can be the best lawyer, this and that. But like, when you're in a situation like this, all of that is sort of meaningless, right? When, mm -hmm. when it really comes down to it, just taking care of this body and helping each other to maintain this life, there's nothing more important than that. So that time I decided, okay, you know, this is what I want to do because everything else just seemed very superfluous at that point, to be honest. Um, and I came back and I, you know, did my prereq. I just changed the whole trajectory of my college education all of a sudden, but I was able to do it. And then I still decided to take a year off because I was like, I really need to do more and learn more because if I'm going into medicine, I need to have a clear understanding of why I'm doing it. I need to go beyond the classrooms and not just bury my head in books. So then I took a year off before starting medical school. I deferred for a year. I got into medical school, but I said, I'm going to take a year. And I traveled for six months and I backpacked across Southeast Asia. And this was pre iPhone, still have my guidebooks. <laughs> this was pre like Google. So real <laughs> I, like you had to figure it out. You actually had to talk to people and like and traveling solo for the first time. Um, you know, I started out in India where my comfort zone is I speak the language and no family members. So I did small trips and I got more confident, met some people. Then I went to Sri Lanka and then I said, I'll go to Thailand. Then I went to Vietnam and Laos. And then I mustered up the courage enough to go to Myanmar. Um, at that time, the junta was still in the rules. So for three weeks I spent in Myanmar were sort of life changing because it's, that's when you really realize what life is, right? You go to a place where you can't even exchange money and you go in, you have complete, you're cut off from the outside world. There's no outside contact. You go in and then one of the, the most touching moments was like, we checked in, I, I met someone uh, who is a Finnish girl Then we decided to go into Burma together. So we go to this little BNB and it's like, literally $8 a night, we go in and we put our luggage down. It was a long journey to get in. And the woman there was like, well, you don't know how to convert the currency. And you don't know, you know, it's, it's hard here. So here's some money. Why don't you go eat first? So I was <laughs> like, <laughs> these people have nothing, absolutely nothing. But she wanted to make sure that we ate first and we were taken care of. 
So I think throughout that journey, what I saw was humanity. What I saw was people. I saw life. And I realized that so many things are just bells and whistles. Like our focus is so distracting, right? And we're going away from what life truly means. And to be healthy and to be really connected with this bo mind, body, and soul, it, we have to look inwards. It's not a pill. It's not a diet. It's not a program. Nothing that's going to fix it until we learn to look inside. So that was a very pivotal moment in my life to see what life really is, what health really means, how do you use this body as a vessel to really experience life in its full potential. Um, and that somehow changed the trajectory of medicine. And I went back to medical school with a whole new perspective. And I knew that even at the end of my medical school training, this is something I wanted to bring in. I wanted to use traditions that have been around every culture, every part of this world has their way of practicing medicine. And a lot of that's focused on how to stay healthy, not just fix diseases. So I wanted to learn more about it through my travels, through my education, through my training, and bring it to people who really need it the most, which is us in the Western world, and especially in America, we can use all the help we need. Even though we're, we use the latest science and research and technology, I think we are ultimately the sickest people. Um, where our spirits are sick, our emotions, our mind and body are sick. So if we can expand our toolbox to include what's been around, what's time tested, what's really practiced and combine that with the latest research, it's like, why not do the best of both worlds? So that's the whole transition in, from medicine to integrative medicine. Mm -hmm.